My name is Larry Jordan, and this is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on using still images inside Final Cut Pro 10. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to size your still images so they look great in video. A couple of key definitions before we start. The first is resolution. Resolution is the size of an image measured in pixels. Now, we've used DPI for years, but DPI is a measure of resolution that applies only to printing, not to video and not to the web. Video measures images based upon the total number of pixels across, the width, by the total number of pixels high, the height. The aspect ratio is the shape of an image described as the ratio of its width to its height, and common aspect ratios are 16 by 9 and 4 by 3. However, pixels, too, have aspect ratios. Most pixels for HD video are square. However, HDV and some DVC Pro HD formats are not. Also, NTSC and PAL don't use square pixels. They use rectangular pixels. Square pixels are described as having an aspect ratio of 1 to 1. So here's the basic problem with getting good quality images. A Canon EOS 5D Mark II shoots an image which is 5,616 pixels across by 3,744 pixels high. When you multiply those numbers, it creates 21.1 megapixels, 100% of the image as represented by that blue bar on the left in the chart. When we move down to 1080p HD images, that's 1,920 pixels by 1080 pixels, which translates to 2.1 megapixels, less than 10% of the Canon image resolution. That's represented by the second bar from the left in the chart. If we go to 720p, that's 1280 by 720, that's 0.9 megapixels, or 4.3% of a Canon image. And NTSC, just by way of comparison, is an image size which is 720 by 480, which works out to 0.3 megapixels, which is less than 2% of the Canon image, the far right line in the chart. I mean, there's no there, there. The highest quality that we can get with video is less than 10% of a state-of-the-art DSLR camera. We're throwing 90% of the pixels away just to put it in video. When you've got that much resolution disappearing, You've got to be really careful with the pixels that are left. So here's the key concept. All video editing software expects images to be roughly equal to video frame sizes. This means that still images, which are generally shot at very high resolution, need to be scaled so that they are within the range that video editing software expects. While Final Cut Pro 10 can work with very high resolution images, in general, it is happier if image sizes are 4,000 pixels on a side or smaller. If you want an image to fill the frame, you need to make special note of this table. If you're working at NTSC 4x3, you need to create your image inside Photoshop so it's 720x540. Why 540 and not 480, you ask? Because the computer works with square pixels and NTSC works with rectangular pixels. This full screen size compensates for the difference in pixel aspect ratio between the computer, square, and NTSC, rectangular. If we're working with a 16x9 NTSC image, create your image at 853 by 480 This will perfectly fill the frame for a 16x9 NTSC image. If we look at PAL, 1024 by 576 PAL is a very short, fat pixel. And when we deal with computer pixels, we've got to make some major differences there. So create your PAL image at 1024 by 576. For 720 HD, 1280, 720. And for 1080 HD, make it 1920, 1080. If all you want is a really high quality image that doesn't move, you're not zooming or panning, then set it to the numbers based on the full screen column. If, on the other hand, you want to do moves on the image, what are called Ken Burns effects, where you're zooming in or zooming out or panning left or up or down or whatever, then you want to make the image larger than full size so that when you zoom in, you never make the image greater than 100% size. Your image will never look good when the scaling is greater than 100%. The best your image will ever look is when the scale equals 100%. 
As we increase it, all we're doing is taking pixels and make them bigger. Fat pixels look blurry, they look grainy, they look terrible. So the secret to creating stills and moving them in video is to create an image which is larger than full screen, so when you bring it into your video editing package, it's reduced below 100% size, which means that you've got room to zoom in up to 100% or zoom back or pan left or right. What you do is you take the full screen size and multiply each dimension by 2.5. This allows you to zoom in or zoom out two and a half times or pan left to right. And you can see the numbers listed there in the column on the far right. No moves, use the full screen numbers. Pan zooms, use the 2.5 moves column of numbers. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 500 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and up-to-date. Plus, members can attend all our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on using still images inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.biz slash store and look for webinar 93.